Career Fast Track with Kade Olufemi Ayola, a career management coach. Good afternoon. You're welcome to another episode of Career Fast Track with Kayo De Olufe Miyayola, the career management coach. You're welcome, Mr. Kayo De. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, the last time you were in our studio, we had a little taste of what employability was all about. And you explained several things to us. But today, we want to take it further. Mm-hmm. Now that I have gotten that job, Let's say I'm not yet being paid for it. Uh, I volunteered in a place and uh, they're paying me, let's say, 20,000 naira. What do I need to do to make that transition from where I am to that blue chip job I desire? Okay, let me answer that question with, 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 a, with a story. Somebody came to me a couple of years ago. Yes. He had, this, he had just finished school. He had been looking for a job for over a year and um, he was frustrated. So he asked me to look at the CV. I looked at it and I said, look, um, your CV is not the problem, but you're the problem. So he said, what can he do? I said, well, you have to begin. You need to get that first job. So he said, what can he do? He has tried everything. I said, what's your best NGO? He said, little saints of an age. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah. I said, okay, why don't you go there and tell them you want to volunteer? And he said, but that has nothing to do with my passion. I said, well, right now, passion isn't it because you you don't have a job. So what's passion? It's overrated. So he said, okay. So he went to a little sense of an age. He volunteered. The MD there told him that she could not afford to pay him, but um, that she would, um, that he should begin. So he started working there. Now, you probably want to ask me what he was doing. Yeah, please. uh, What can he be doing? Yeah, he was, he was changing diapers washing bonbons, bopping the babies, putting them to sleep, wow. singing to them. That was what he was doing. A graduate of Nigeria. Of wow. Nigeria that's what he was doing. So um, he did that for one full year. For over a year, he did that. Of course, at the time he came to meet me and he said, look, that he's been thinking that he would like to see how he can draw funds, how he can draw sponsorship to the orphanage. I said, fantastic. Good. I said, go do a proposal. And so he went and he did one. I took a look at it and I gave him some advice. He prepared something really nice, took it to the banks, and the money began to roll in. Now, guess what happened just over a year later? Somebody who used to come and drop food, um, rice and clothes and stuff for the children, Hmm. ran into him and said, look, I see you around here a lot. Do you work here? He said, not exactly. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, I kind of volunteer. I'm a graduate. I don't have a job. And he said, okay, but he said, um, a new multinational just came into the country from South Africa. Would he be interested in being a marketing executive? He said, would I? Yes, I would. I'm sure he'd be interested yeah. in that. And he came to me and he said, um, he needs to put his CV together, but he's scared. I said, why are you scared? He said, because he doesn't, he doesn't really see what um, his experiences so far in the orphanage could um, help position him for this new job. But said, ju- just a yeah. minute, how can you relate his experience? He was changing diapers. Okay, he started going washing out to get... Di- washing bonbons. Washing bonbons, diapers, singing to the babies. Singing to the babies <laughs> and bopping them. That's what he was doing. He'll be back after this short commercial. Are you tired of putting in countless applications without any response? Do you want to move your career to another level? Then tune in to Career Fast Track with Kayode Olufemi Ayola, a career management coach. This program is designed to empower you, to move you from where you are to where you are to be, putting you on the fast track to career excellence. You were saying about the, uh, the the experience with the young man at the orphanage. So he, he, he felt scared. He felt his experiences were not adequate to position him for the job he was applying for. And I said, relax. I said, remember you've been, you've been um, sourcing for sponsorship for, for Little Saints? He said, yeah, but he doesn't know if it's enough. I said, it is. It is. So he, he asked me, so what should he do? I said, when you get there 
and they ask you, what have you been doing? You, when did you finish? I said, well, tell them. And then he said, so if, if they ask me what I've been doing, I said, tell them. Tell them that you, you, you couldn't get the job, so you volunteered for your best NGO. And I said, okay. So he said, when they, when they ask me um, about my experiences, what should I say? I said, tell them you were washing bonbons, <laughs> changing <laughs> diapers, <laughs> wow. popping the children. <laughs> and I said, when you say that, they will laugh. Yeah, definitely. They will laugh. I'm, I'm and I said, yeah, I said, I said, and I said, what you need to do next is to tell them how you saw the deplorable state of things and how you felt you needed to attract sponsorship and how you how you packaged proposals and took it to these banks and how money began to roll in. Do you know what happened? What happened? Tell me about it. Look, when he got there to the, for the interview, he met people from other from other telecom um, companies. Because it was it was a it was one of those uh, multinational companies, and they were kind of related to the telecom business. So when um, he saw his competition, he got scared. He called me. He said, "Look, uh, there are people here from telecom." I said, "Relax, relax." But when he got in there, do you know what happened? What he got the job. He got the job. He got the job <laughs> from oh, washing wow. bomb bombs bomb. <laughs> to, be, to, be, to, to being offered the job as a marketing executive. Wow! In in a multinational uh, environment. That's really something. That transition yeah. is really amazing. Yeah. Washing bomb bombs and going out for sponsorship, yeah. and now you you get a very good employment. Yeah, but, but you see, it's based on a process. It's based on a formula I call be do have. Please, could you explain? Now, be, do, have. The B part means who must I become? Hmm. Now you've gotten this first job. Yeah. You've gotten this opportunity. Yeah. No matter wh- whether they're not paying you or maybe it's a volunteer thing, but you started. And that's what counts. You have started. Okay. Now, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, what kind of person do I need to become to leave this place? Hmm. What kind of person? What kind of person do I need to, to become? become? Now, what that means is you need to draw up a job description. You need to design a job description of the person you want to become. How do I get that job description? Well, first of all, um, you need to ask yourself, where would I, what kind of job would I like to do? You have to look at how you can plan a transition from where you are to where you want to be. You have to become the kind of person that can make the change that you need to make. Mm. Now, be to have means who must I become? Okay. In order for me to do what I need to do mm. to have the results I want to have. Now, the re- what okay. you want to have is the, 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 the dream job, the blue chip offer from this multinational environment. I mean. That is what you want. However, To get that kind of opportunity, you have to have built up certain experiences. You have to have done certain things. Wow, certain things we need to do. We'll be back to get to know those things we will have to do. No matter the stage, there's still room for greatness. No matter the stage, there's a bit of greatness in every man. There's power to Welcome back again. The B do have principle is what we are on. And Mr. Kaide has just taken the, the B, what we ha- who we must become. And is really expository for me because, I, I mean, someone out there I've, I haven't gotten the, vol- the opportunity, the foot at the door, that job. Now I need to do something to become the person that everybody will seek after. Mr. Kaide, could you expand shit on that? Well, let me use myself as an example. Many years ago, I have this, I have this problem. I got this job in a horrible environment, a horrible consulting firm, and they weren't paying me. Now, I needed to plan a transition. Now, I noticed I'd been applying. I applied for everything I could see 
nobody was calling me. Wow. So I, I felt that something was wrong. But, I, but you know, you see, when you're not getting feedback, how do you change? And that's what I was talking about in the last episode about insanity. Doing the same thing, expecting different results. When you don't know what you're doing wrong, how do you make changes? That was the problem. So what I did was I stopped applying. I did. Stopped I stopped applying. Stopped applying. So <laughs> what I did was I asked myself, what kind of job do I want? And the, hmm. answer, I, the answer I came up with was, I want to become a, an HR professional, an HR manager in a very good organization. Okay. So what I did was, I spent the next couple of weeks on the net, on the internet, trying to come up with a job description. Job description yeah. of who you want to become on yes, the net? of the person I needed to become. Okay. I, I went, I glossed over a lot of HR manager adverts. I went on the net, I looked at a lot of multinational adverts for HR managers. I needed to name the job title. I needed to name the responsibilities. Okay. I needed to name the competencies, even the key activities and All the right. levels of authority. I needed to name the actual content of this job, what I will be doing every day. I needed to do that. It took me three weeks to do that. Three weeks. Three weeks. To discover who you want to become. But you see, when I did it and I looked at what I had done and I compared it with what I had, I compared it with the person I was, finally I understood why nobody was calling me. Why? Because I wasn't the kind of person they were looking for. Oh. I couldn't have, don't forget that I said that a job is a problem. Okay. And a problem is a job. All right. Now, when you can do a job profitably for an organization, they give you an opportunity. That's when you get the job. Okay. So I finally understood why nobody was calling me, no emails, no texts, nothing. I finally understood. So now the challenge I had was, how do I become this person? I looked at the place where I was working and I realized that, look, I would only be able to get prepared to the degree of maybe 25%. So I needed to begin to look for places outside my office where I could build those competencies. Just a minute. After outside your office, yes. where you could build the competencies, yes. irrespective of what you, the responsibilities you already have in the office, exactly. you w went out to seek for that knowledge. Yes. How did you do that? I began to volunteer. Wow. I volunteered in church. I looked for places where I could volunteer in order to learn the competencies I needed to learn. Okay. That's key. That's key. A very good example is somebody who came to me and said he wanted to, he was doing um, something related to um, surveying, that sort of thing. That was what he was doing. Now, he wanted to move into the oil industry. And he came and he asked me and he said, how can he make the leap? I said, very simple. Do you know Primavera? He said, what is that? I said, that's, that's, that's a software the oil industry uses predominantly. It's a project management software. Can you use it? He said, no. I said, I'll learn how to use it. So he came back to me a couple of weeks later and said he had found a company that could give him the, um, the training for Primavera. I said, good. I said, but let me ask you a question. Are they going to be training you or teaching you every day? The, person that, the people that are going to train you, are they people that use this software every day? He said, no, that they are trainers. I said, don't, don't go <laughs> well, to them. Don't go to them. Why? Now, let me tell you something. The people that use this software every day to solve problems are the best people to learn from. Okay. Because they're going to be teaching you from their problems. They're going to give, you're going to ask them to give you their problems at work to solve. Okay. So when you solve the problems, you can do the job. And that's where experience comes in. Experience has nothing to do with being paid a salary. Just a minute. Experience has nothing to do with being be, paid yeah. a salary. Experience has nothing to do with being paid a salary. Look, wow. You are paid a salary when you do a job profitably. But the question here is this. If you can do or execute a job profitably, even if you haven't earned a salary doing it, you have the same chance of getting that job. Wow. That's what counts. That's what counts. And so I told this guy to do that. And that's what he did. He learned from the, the person that was teaching him. He learned by solving that person's problems. The problems that guy had at work became his problems. So when he went for the interview and they asked him, can you use Primavera? He said, if you mean if I have experience, yes and no. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, I yes or no. What? He said, well, if, if you ask me if I've been paid to solve problems using Primavera, no. But if you're asking me if... I can solve your problems profitably for your organization, yes. And he said, look, let's cut to the chase. Rather than waste time, 
Can you bring the problems you, you, you face using this software in this organization? If I solve these problems for you, hire me. If I don't, show me the door. Wow, this is where we have to draw the curtains today. For more inquiries, please email us at careerfasttrack at yahoo.com or careerfasttrack2011 at gmail.com. Do have a nice day. Career Fast Track with Kade Olufemi Ayola, a career management coach.